All right, Shalom. Want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Racha Kodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War. Back at you again with another lesson. And this lesson is based off a discussion and um, a question, you know. The question was, will the Lord save families? Will the Lord save families? And the answer to that is yes. The Lord will save families. All right? But uh, it's, it's a little more to it. All right? When you get down to the root of it, you know? See, we of the hopeful elect, all right, here at Great Millstone, start with my apostles and elders of Great Millstone, all right, great men of Yahweh Bashim House Shai. You know, we get down to the truth. All right? Because it's all about the truth. It's about faith. Now, yes, the Lord will save families, but what I will say is that, you know, you shouldn't be worried about family. You should be worried about yourself. All right? And I mean that in a righteous way, not an evil way. You know, as some may get offended because you're very emotional if you're offended. But the scriptures back it up. And uh, one of my favorite scriptures is the book of Romans, chapter 14. All right, where Apostle Paul said, the book of Romans 14 and 22, has thou faith, have it to thyself before the Most High. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in the thing which he alloweth. So Apostle Paul said, have thou faith. You know, question mark, have thou faith? Then he said, have it to thyself before the Most High. It's important that you have faith to yourself because it's you that were called into this truth. It wasn't your family, all right? Which your family is a, you know, partake of the truth as long as you have your house in order, you know? And um, they, they should, you know, if the Lord have mercy, let me, let me just get this out. Because uh, you know how the scriptures say your mind uh, have, wants you to say many things. But let me just get straight to the point. The Lord called you into this truth. All right. And it's, an, it's, it's, it's hard enough. All right. For us each day to strive in righteousness. Because we're enduring hardship as a soldier. All right. And it's a thing where the Lord also said, Yahweh Shai, our Lord. He said, he that endureth to the end the same shall be saved. So while we're in this truth, all right, we have to do the things the Most High pleases, which is doing His will and striving for perfection. Now, I want to say this too, because, you know, here at Great Millstone, start with my apostles, you know, we all speak the same thing and we all learn. And um, being in this truth, you know, we have, the scriptures tell you, strive for perfection, but we also tell you that we're not perfect. We're not perfect neither. Scriptures say we all come short of the glory of the Most High. So none of us could be prideful. We're all still working on salvation. All right, we're working on ourselves to hopefully be that election because it's all about the elect. Now, when we say that we're not perfect, that doesn't mean that you make that an, an, an excuse to not strive for perfection, okay? We're saying we're not perfect because it's the truth. Because we also go off, but we're not wicked. This is why we pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right, to, um, to forgive us of our sins, all right, and improve us not iniquity, you know? And we hope that we're the elect because it's all about faith. We already broke the laws, all right? So we're not going to be saved by the laws. We're saved through our faith. But the laws is there to govern our flesh. So you can't have one without the other. If you have faith, you're going to keep the laws to the best of your ability. All right. If you keep the laws, but you don't have faith, you ain't going to make it. You know, that's, a, you know, a straight shot at the, the Old Testament guys who don't believe in Yahweh Shai. All right. We believe in Yahweh Shai. We worship Yahweh Shai. We praise Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. We stand stiffly for the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So when we say we're not perfect, that doesn't mean that you don't strive for your perfection because that's a cop out. You know, and that also goes for you few sisters too. You know, you believe 
And as uh, soon as you do wrong, or whatever, or even me, all right? We do wrong, you go, oh, I ain't perfect. No, man, there's no cop out. We're striving for perfection, even though we're not going to see perfection in the sinful flesh, but we're striving for it. All right. That's our duty. Keep the commandments of the most high. All right. So that, you know, the Lord find us worthy. OK, he find us worthy of being his elect. So I wanted to stress that point. So let's get back to Romans 14 and 22. Has thou faith? Have it to thyself before the most high. So you got to have faith toward the most high yourself, because going back to what I had just said, it was you that the Lord called. He sent the angel, all right, to open up your mind. And it's for you, you know. You men, he said, you men, oh men I've called. Revelation 21 and 3, he said, my tabernacle is with men. So the men are the heads, okay. But guess what? There's a few sisters that come in. And I say this, I'm going to read a quick precept what Apostle Paul said, all right. He said in um, 1 Corinthians 7 and 14, he says, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. All right? Just get away from me. over here real quick. All right? Because if you have a, um, uh, uh, if, if, if you're a man and you have a wife that doesn't believe, it's possible, all right, that if the Lord has shown mercy, if you love your woman, even though she don't believe you got children with her, you was with her before you, you know, woken up to this truth and was called into this ministry, you know, you still in there with her, she don't believe, the Lord can actually save her through you. And even through you women that believe and your husband don't, it's possible your husband could be sanctified through you. But remember what Yahweh Shai said. He said, he that endureth to the end shall be saved because you do have fallout boys. We call them the fallout boys, all right? You got men that are coming to this truth, that will teach the word for a season, and then all of a sudden they disappear, they fall, go back to the world, all right? Whether some false philosophy, you know, or they got tired, they fall, they fell out, they fall out. And the Lord said, he that put his hand to the plow, looking back is not fit for the kingdom. That applies to women too. You know, throughout the years that my apostles, all right, and elders here at Great Millstone and their elders, there were plenty of women that believed or so-called believed. But where are these women at today? Some of them fell, went back into the world, man, you know? You don't taste of this holy gift, this holy calling, and go back into the world, man. All right, this is our lifestyle. You know, you know how people hate lifestyles of working out? It's the thing they gotta do. You know, they, they're urgent, they're active to do it. You know, they feel bad if they don't. Well, that's how we feel in this truth. If we don't put out a lesson or do what is inquired for us to the Lord, doing his will, you don't feel like you're doing good, man. And really, to be honest with you, you're not. Because um, the only uh, life, true life in this earth today is those that serve Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? Everything else is of this world and it's going to die with this world. All right? It's going to die with this world, man. Paul, Apostle Paul said the fashion of this world passeth away. All right? So I didn't mean to go off subject, but it's all in subject. You know, the question was, the discussion was uh, earlier that, um, um, will the Lord save families? And the answer to that is yes. But I'll say this, you got to focus on yourself, all right? Because at the end of the day, it's all according to the Lord's will, and he's going to save his elect. He, the most high is bound by his word, okay? And then, too, at the end of the day, you have no choice anyway, all right? There's nothing you can do if the Lord doesn't deliver them, you know? Because even Yahweh Shai said, the disciples asked them if they lose wives, children, you know, whatever, they will receive a hundredfold in the kingdom. So whoever don't make it anyway, all right, if you be delivered, you're going to see him again in the kingdom right here on this earth, man. So at the end of the day, yeah, you, you pray for those that help you and the loved ones, you know, who you care about. But don't put your feelings to that. That's a weak nature. Because you got to really, truly worry about yourself. You got to make sure you in order. You got to examine yourself, man. You know, so real quick, I know I'm kind of jumping around everywhere, but... You know, uh, let's get, get this scripture here. This is uh, 2nd Edges 14 and 13. It says, Now therefore set thy house in order and reprove thy people, comfort such as them as be in trouble, and now renounce corruption. So you got to set your house in order, which it starts with you. You know, our apostles here, all right, and elders, they already, you know, taught us over, over and over because this word is constant, it's repetitive. 
that you are your biggest enemy. You, you gotta look yourself in the mirror. You are your biggest critic. You know, them demons that be in your head is, is in you. That's why when I read here, let's go back. I know I'm jumping around, all right? But let's get back to Romans 14 and 22. Has thou faith, have it to thyself before the most high. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in a thing which he alloweth. Because it's you that allow these things when you um, offend it in the word, when the word cuts you, all right? Um, it's you that can lose your cool, man. It's those demons that you got to rebuke. So you're really fighting against yourself and your own thoughts, all right? This is a spiritual war. You got to fight off the, the, the uh, fear that, that, that's upon you. You got to pray. How you fight is that you pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. And you ask the Lord to strengthen your faith, all right? To increase your faith. You ask for strength, you know? So it says, happy is he that condemneth not himself in a thing which he alloweth. That's important. Hope that register. It says, and he that doubteth is damned if he eat. Because you got men that doubt that doesn't really have the faith. They're just going through the motions, you know? And, and they get a part of the body and then all of a sudden they, they make this thing a routine you know um it's not no passion behind it it's just a routine you know they're going through the motions man you know they're not really putting their their good foot forward you know they're not really uh passionate about this truth they're not active the way they can be the way they should be all right then you got to get on them hey brother what's going on man you might have to demote them you know from a rink because they ain't doing what they supposed to do, you know? Because we're a body, all right? We're a body. Imagine your body stop producing the red and, and the red cells and stop uh, kicking out the uh, information out the body. If your body stop doing these things, the body dies, all right? And we're in the body of your Yahawashai, man. So you gotta be active, man, all right? So it says, he that doubteth is damned if he eat because he eateth not with faith. So it's all about faith. You know, you're doubting because you go through a little trouble. You know, your woman left you. You know, your kids come against you. Your family coming against you. You know, it says, because he eateth not with faith, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So, getting back to the subject, where the Lord say families, yes. But really, to get down to the root of things, you got to have faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh yourself, man. You know, and you have to pray. And hopefully, if you the elect, and if the Lord wanted to show mercy, he would save you and your family. Now, I have an account also where the Lord did save families, man. One of them I'm thinking of right now. I know I'm jumping everywhere too, but I'm going to just flow in the spirit. All right. I'll hopefully, I'll get back to the scripture that I had. But what, one thing I'm thinking about right now is uh, Rahab, Rahab, the heathen woman that helped the spies. All right, when Joshua sent out the spies in the land, she actually was uh, saved her and her family from being destroyed. And that was a heathen woman, man. So that shows you the Most High can show mercy on whoever he showed mercy to. And matter of fact, that's the scripture. So uh, I'm going to come back. Well, I ain't got to come back to that. Let's go to Romans 13 and verse 9. It says, uh, oh, excuse me, 9 and 13. Let's go to Romans chapter 9, verse 13. It says, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? God forbid. For Moses say unto, excuse me. For he say unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Now the Lord said, I have, lo I have uh, loved Jacob and hated Esau, and then it says, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? God forbid. Because there is no unrighteousness with the Most High. Everything is according to His will. And another thing to keep in mind is that, yeah, the Lord could do whatever He want, but the Most High is also bound by His word. That's what makes us, uh, this, this is that trust. All right, what is written, the Most High shall bring to pass. Matter of fact, the scriptures say His word doesn't go out void. It accomplish. Uh, the, uh, it accomplishes will Roughly paraphrasing Alright So that's another thing to keep in mind The Most High does what he does What he please Alright And he can do whatever he want But he's also bound by his word So let's get back to the scripture It says what shall we say then Is there unrighteousness with the Most High 
God forbid. For he say unto Moses, I have mercy on whom I will have mercy. So you see? So the Most High can show mercy if he please, man. And the true mercy is coming to those of the elect that's going to be delivered. That's the mercy that we want to be delivered on the chariot, man. Being of the first fruits, the elect. You know, that's the true mercy, that, that complete mercy, man. At the end of the day, it says, For he say unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. It says, So then is there, is there, is it not of him that will it? Damn. So then it is not of him that will it, nor of him that runneth, but of the Most High that show of mercy. So it's not of man's will. So this takes us right back to the topic at the, le the topic of the lesson. All right, that you know, will your family be saved? It's possible. All right, but it's not your will. It's the Heavenly Father's will at the end of the day. So all we can do is work toward the prize, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Because at the end of the day, it's according to the Heavenly Father's will, man. All right? So that point was made. Uh, second Edges 14 and 13, it says, Now therefore set thou, heart, set thou house in order and reprove thou people, comfort such as them as be in trouble, and now renounce corruption. Let go from thee mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature. You know? Now, you know, that's that flesh. The flesh um, have you to be in weak nature. You know, the scriptures, the scriptures say our spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. And of course, we want those we love to make it. And, and you know, say if, you know, family members die, you cry, you mourn. You know, well, we have to put off that weak nature. You know, it's hard, you know, especially when you're going through the ring of fire. But to be, to endure hardness as a soldier, you have to, because it's about perseverance. It's about persevere. We have to endure this truth, all right? And Yahweh Bashem Shah all the way to the end, man. So to get down to the root of things, don't worry so much about the family. Worry about I, worry about yourself doing right and put them prayers up for the family. But don't put your bank on it, man, because it ain't your will. You know, that's the grips you gotta come to understanding with, that it's the Heavenly Father's will, man, you know? And I do this lesson for myself first, you know? And I hope that the words that's coming through me is through your howl by Shemel Shai. I hope it, it edifies someone and, it, and I hope you can build on this, get something from it to build upon your salvation toward the Lord, man, to increase your faith, you know, and your understanding, you know, because we're all learning each and every day, man. All right. So it says, let go from the mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, you know, because it's heavy on your mind. You're young in the spirit. You're thinking about your child, your newborn baby you just had or whatever the case may be. Right. The scriptures say and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. So anything that's heavy on the mind that weighs on your flesh to bring you miserable, to make you miserable, to make you worry, you're supposed to put those things to the side, man. You know? Now, now the truth is, it's easier said than done. You know, because we, we go through the ring of fire and it's rough, it's tough, man. But you have to persevere, man. You gotta get through it, man. You know, we all have to get through these things. We're all going through these things, man. All right? It says, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste thee to flee from these times. Because you're supposed to be praying fervently, man. You're supposed to be doing the works, being active fervently on fire, man. Because you want the kingdom to come today, tomorrow, you know, now, you know, you know, tomorrow, you know, you want the kingdom to come yesterday, man. All right? So you're supposed to be praying. Haste. It says, haste thee to flee from these times, for yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen shall happen. Uh, excuse me. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. So great evil is coming, man. And we ain't seen the greatest evil yet. We're seeing evil, we're seeing wickedness, but it's greater troubles coming, man. Like Jacob's trouble. It's gonna come. The great devastation. All right, al Asijah. All right, uh, the Almighty, Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh uh, Shah. Uh, Yahweh's Mashapat is coming. All right? So, all right, I think I made a lot of points. Um, let's get a scripture, uh, which the question was, will the Lord save families? And the answer is yes. All right. You have Cornelius. Let me read that real quick. 
because Cornelius was mistaken as a heathen, but he was an Israelite. Through the Spirit, all right, we understand that Cornelius is an Israelite. All right, this is why you have a called speckled bird. You have Israelite foreigners, Israelites who may look like the other nations, but they're Israelites. And those who come back into the fold, all right, they believe in Yahweh Shai, all right, and 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 they're Israelites, all right, through the Spirit, but also through the through their father's line, okay, from the seed of their fathers that makes them Israelites, man. All right, so this is Acts chapter two and uh, ten and two. I it says a devout man and one that feared the Most High with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to the Most High always. So Cornelius was a devout man, all right? And it says, one that feared the Most High with all his house. So he had this young men in his family, he had the women in his family, the young women in the family, they all believed in the Most High and they feared the Most High, all right? Because he had his house in order, okay? And it says, which gave much alms to the people, meaning they gave alms, man. All right, they helped, they provided. They did a lot of alms in the Lord, all right? And you know, alms get rid of sins. You know, doing, doing, giving alms to brothers, you know, that in the need, or you just, because of your sincerity, you wanna help, that get rid of sins, man. And that pleases the Most High. It says, and pray to the Most High always, all right? Now let's read this and I'll close out, which I have a few precepts here. Oh, I got another one for you real quick. This is Acts 11 and 14. It says, Who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved? All right? It says, And all thy house shall be saved. So you are going to have families, all right? Father, wife, children being delivered. It's going to happen. All right? It's going to happen. But you got to put your faith in the Lord first and keep the ordinance. Because when you're not keeping the ordinance, that probably ain't gonna happen, man. All right? So that's why I said you gotta focus on yourself instead of focusing on your family, man. You know? So let's get this scripture and I'll close out. This is the book of Acts. Uh, Acts 16. I'm gonna read this uh, quick account with uh, Paul and Silas. And this is a beautiful account. All right? This is... Um, all right, you could... You know, you can read this story for yourself. I'm going to try to hit these points. I'm going to read into it. Let's get uh, Acts 16 and uh, verse 25. It says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto the Most High, and the prisoners heard them. Because Paul and Silas were locked up. They got they got uh, cast into prison, all right, for, uh, for, uh, for Paul. You know, he performed a miracle on this, on this damsel, this woman, all right? And um, she had a, a, a wicked spirit on her, a lying spirit. And uh, these men that had this woman out there teaching lies, Susans, you know, she couldn't lie anymore because the spirit wasn't helping her, all right? And she wasn't collecting that money for these men. So these men caught Paul and Silas, you know, and called the Romans on them, and they got caught up, man. And they got beaten and they got cast into prison. So now we're reading the part where they was cast into prison, right? And that, now this is what the Lord did. It says, and it came to pass as we went to prayer. Oh, Salakia. That was, all right, this is Acts 16, 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas praised, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to the Most High and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. And the keeper of the prison, of the prison, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself because supposing that the prisoners had been fled. All right, so you had this prisoner, which you're gonna, you're gonna realize he was an Israelite. And um, when the earthquake happened that loose Paul and Silas in the prison and opened the gates, the doors, he pulled out a knife. All right, and he said he would have killed himself. So you gotta imagine, you know, he must have had a great charge over him. That if anything, if Paul and Silas would have escaped, he probably would have been the cost of his life. So he says, and the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners have been fled. It says, but Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm for we are all here. It says, then he called for a light 
and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on your Lord, believe on the Lord, and how shall Mashiach, and thou shalt be saved, and thou house. Alright, so not only him, you know, uh, believing in the Lord, not only him wanting to be saved, but he said, and thou house. And it says, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in the house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them out into his house, and we had brought them into his house, he sat, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in, in the Most High with all his house. It says, and when it was day, well, that's the point, that's the point, all right? So it wasn't just him, you know, it was his household as well, man. If they believe in Yahweh Shai, you and your household shall be saved, man, all right? So you gotta give diligence to make your call and election sure. And the scriptures also say, work out thou own salvation with fear and trembling, man. You know, so I thought to, uh, hopefully, I thought, you know, hopefully those precepts will help. All right. And uh, really give you the understanding of this truth. All right. That, you know, you worrying about your house being saved. Worry about yourself first, man. All right. And then hopefully through that. Ooh. Yeah. Woo. Because it's a scripture that summed that up. This is the book of Matthews. Yeah, Matthew 6. Let's see here. Uh, Matthew 6. And, um, ooh, yeah, let's read this and I'll close. This is Matthew 6 and verse 28. It says, And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil you not, neither do they spin. It says, And yet say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if the Most High so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Because, you know, it's, it's nothing wrong with asking questions, all right? And um, it's a good thing to ask questions. You should ask questions, all right? That's how you learn. But if you put your faith, you know, if, if, if you don't have faith in the Lord, then you have little faith, man. Well, let me say this. I can say this correctly. If, if you don't have the true understanding of this truth, then you're going to have little faith. Okay? Then we want to have great faith in this truth. All right? You know? We want to have faith, period. But the, the scriptures say, it says, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? You know? Here it is. You have faith, but you have little you know, and you worried about, you know, really the wrong things. You know, you got faith. You want to have great faith, man. Not old little faith worrying about what the Lord is going to do. You're supposed to have that trust, you know. And um, and that understanding gives you that trust. That true understanding gives you that trust in the Lord. So it says, uh, therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith shall we be clothed? But after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye need of all these things. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You see that? <laughs> that sum up the, uh, the lesson, man. But seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High. You got to seek the kingdom first. And yourself, man. You got to go after this truth. All right? It says, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day of evil thereof. You see? So seek the kingdom first, man. You know, get understanding. And then all these things will be added, you know? So I hope this lesson is edifying. All right, to those of the hopeful elect, that's why we do these lessons, man. All right? We do these lessons to edify and to build because the word edify means to build and hopefully it builds upon your faith toward the Lord. And um, so with that, I want to give all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha, Kodash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.